Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Logic Live. I hope you can see my screen. Yes, there we go. This is episode 24. Where we're going to be interviewing Autodesk Fred Warren or Fred Warren from Autodesk, depending on, uh, you know, how you'd like to, uh, uh, how your relationship is with Fred. Um, we had, uh, well, first of all, uh, Logic Live is brought to you by Cynesis.io. Cynesis is my own personal uh, reseller. The relationship we've had for 15 years has been invaluable. Uh, and we couldn't do what we do without them. If you need anything in the way of remote workflow or or uh, just you're trying to put something together at home and and uh, and you need a partner, reach out to Synesis. Solutions Development, Integration and Support, uh, supporting flame artists since 1997. We had a hell of a week last week. Um, first of all, we launched forum.logic.tv. Uh, if you go to the logic.tv site, you will see a little button that says forum, or you can just enter forum.logic.tv. And uh, Randy McAtee and I have put together um, a, a, like a place for flame artists. And, uh, you know, we listen to your feedback and, we, oh, there's Randy. Hey, man. Uh, we've listened to your feedback and, uh, and this is for you. And I just want to thank everybody who's signed up, everybody who's contributed. And uh, we're really hoping that this, this can be a phenomenal resource. So if you haven't already, please head over to uh, forum.logic.tv, sign up and contribute. Um, and also there is a, uh, it, it's based off of Discourse. So if you grab the uh, Discourse app, Discourse Hub app uh, at your favorite app store of choice, um, you can have a mobile phone experience if you like, complete with notifications and, and, uh, and everything else that goes along with having a mobile phone experience. So forum.logic.tv. We also launched One Frame of White for 2020 and we have 25 people signed up already. Uh, I gotta thank each and every one of those. Uh, this is going to be a great year. The theme for One Frame of White this year is very simple. It's um, joy, okay? Uh, you know, One Frame of White, make the most amazing thing you can think of using all the tools in Flame and only the tools in Flame. Um, and, and make something funny or happy or inspiring, okay? Uh, because, gosh, we need it this year, if, if not else. Uh, the contest is running now. Entries are due on September 30th at uh, just before the stroke of midnight here in New York time. And uh, we've got a hell of a lineup of prizes for everybody. Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot to also mention that uh, everyone who enters one frame of white will receive a 30 day license of Sapphire OFX courtesy of Boris Effects. Uh, you can certainly use those as part of your project and you can download a 30 day trial of flame uh, to work on your project if you don't have a license at home. Details of that are at oneframeofwhite.com including all the rules and other specifics. And what a lineup of prizes we have for you. First place is a Dell 7750 mobile laptop, mobile workstation, as they like to call it. And I grabbed this image off of the Dell website for the, their uh, workstation laptops. So um, this seems familiar. I know Fred recognizes this interface, and we're going we're gonna to talk about that in a few minutes. Uh, this is a fully loaded machine. It's absolutely tricked out, and it comes to us courtesy of Dell, Intel, and NVIDIA. Second place is a 12-month license of Flame. And third place is a 12-month license of Flare, both courtesy of Autodesk. Fourth place is an IO 4K from our friends at AJA, followed by fifth place, a 12 month license of the Boris FX suite. They have their entire uh, software suite now available. And uh, sixth place, a $500 store credit to actionvfx.com. Uh, seventh place is a set of AirPods Pro, courtesy of Synesis. And finally, eighth place, a $99 gift certificate, gift certificate to the best training anywhere from our friends at FXPHD. Uh, please head over to oneframeofwhite.com for all the rules and for all the details and to sign up and, uh, you know, become famous. Make yourself a flame legend. All right. Speaking of flame legends, I would like to welcome my friend and uh, my personal Python Sherpa, uh, Fred Warren, back to Logic Live. Fred, are you there? Yeah, am I the first uh, two times uh, invitee? I think you... Uh, no, Alan. Alan Letary was the first two-time guest. You are, but you are the, <laughs> but you are the, the first two-time guest who's a Buffalo Bills fan. I would uh, like to point uh, that you, out. And I, good guest, Andy. I heard that about you. I don't want to, you know, spread rumors or anything, but like, yeah. yeah in the, what, what's what's uh, how, how did you how did how did a, a nice boy from Canada become a, a Buffalo Bills fan? Uh, it's mainly because you remember those days when you we only got like one game a week, basically on TV. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> the, it's a long time ago, but the uh, it's a time where the bills were actually good. So that that's <laughs> like the, the end of the '80s and the beginning of the '90s, where they went to the four Super Bowl uh, in a row. So like mm -hmm. we got them on TV every week. So this is how I I started to. Uh, 
to uh, follow them as my favorite thing. And I never let them go through all those like suffering years. And, <laughs> and they're, uh, they're better now. So it's, uh, it's, uh, it's cool again to be a oh. fan. <laughs> oh, that's great. That's wonderful. Um, Fred, how did you, you know, we, we know you as Fred from Autodesk. Uh, we know you as, as part of the Flame dev team, but what's your background? How, how did you arrive? When you were a, a six-year-old kid, did you like yearn, like did you dream one day of becoming a product owner or a subject media expert for a, a major international software company? No, certainly not. Uh, when I was uh, very young, so let's say in kindergarten, first grade, uh, actually my parents asked me what I wanted to do later. And my answer was a prisoner. So that was a little bit concerning. <laughs> they, they were like wondering why I had this like wild dream of being in prison when I would be uh, old, but uh, it went away. So that, that was good. Oh, that's but, good. <laughs> but uh, I would say that after, uh, after high school, I mainly wanted to be like doing like uh, either cinema or uh, television work. Um, so I did a first college degree, then went to university and let that go to, uh, go to actually back to college where in a program where a lot of people in Quebec have actually did their uh, television studies. So I, my, my, uh, my college degree is a television work with a specialization in post-production editing. And I would say that at Autodesk and the Flame team, it, it's a total guess, but we probably have around, let's say, I would say at least 40 people who at one time worked in the Flame team that, are, that did that same exact college degree, Stéphane Labrie being one of those. He finished a little bit uh, before me, but, uh, but we have uh, still quite a few people who, who did that, that same uh, education. And I got, we got actually the, the year that I finished my degree is the first year where we got a flame at that school. Uh, so we, we were the, the first one trying to actually do something with it, right? And there was always internship uh, before that going from uh, that school to, uh, to Autodesk. And we, I actually got an internship in the uh, QA department for smoke. Uh, so I, I did my uh, internship there. At the end of it, prayed that they wouldn't hire me. Because, <laughs> <laughs> because, How come? But, but they, there's two things, right? The, the first thing is I, I wanted to do pro, uh, production work. I want like my dream was to go work for the uh, that's a French version of ESPN. Um, <laughs> so I wanted to, to go there, but in a way I was like, I cannot say no to a job, right? If they offer me something, I need to, to take it. And uh, I, I can always try to search for something else in the meantime. Uh, the mm -hmm. other part is that during my internship, Stéphane Labrie had me go through the text module, like, and list basically every buttons like minimum value maximum values type of buttons blah 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 in a excel spreadsheet and i was like yeah that's quite boring a little bit so i said like i'm not too sure that this is what i want to do but stefan offered me a, a contract so i took it it was a contract wasn't it it was not a full-time job anyway uh, so on the last Friday of my internship, he said, we would like to have you back. I showed up on the next Monday and he said, you know what you did for the, the text module? Uh, you're going to do it for the entire software now. <laughs> it, it, it took me three months, I think. And that's 21 year ago. So that was in 99. So I didn't want like them to offer me a job, but I'm still... Uh, <laughs> I'm You're still there. I'm still there. I'm not sure what it tells about, <laughs> about do my you, uh, Do you still have those Excel spreadsheets? 
you know what? Uh, I used to, because we, we are moving quite a lot in, inside the office, we're always like changing spots. Uh, and I've always followed them. If I, I have the, bring them with me. And the last time we moved, I was like, oh, you know what? It's been 20 years. It was like three binders of like uh, <laughs> of Excel spreadsheet. And I was like, oh, you know what? It's just like nostalgia stuff. I, I can uh, I can let it go. You can uh, let it go. I love the memory now. That's that's a hell of a way to learn the software, though. I mean. Oh, oh it's, yeah. It's actually a wonderful way to learn software. Oh yeah, because I mean, I had to go through basically all buttons and try to understand what it was doing. Uh, so yeah, yeah, you couldn't ask. When you have the luxury of having that time to like, try everything like one by one, that's, uh, that's really, really good. That's, I don't think there's a better way to learn the software itself. Mm -hmm. So you started out at Q&A and yes. then for you go, five years from there. So for five years, I was a QA on Smoke. When I started, like I just said, uh, Stefan Labrie was the uh, QA team leader for Smoke. So I worked with him and he left not so long mm -hmm. after for what back in the days we call like product specialist which are, which were really like designers. So you remember Martin Eli was the, mm -hmm. the design product specialist for Flame. And when the product specialist for Smoke, who was uh, Louis Girardin back in, in the days, left, Stefan took the position. And, that's, and they worked, the, the two of them, for a few years. And at some point they said, you know what, we would like to have a third person and Stefan, uh, particularly wanted more of a, an assistant to help him. So he asked me if I was interested in, in the job and I took it. So this is where I moved to, uh, to the product specialist uh, department at the beginning of 2005. And uh, just for the, the, the anecdote, the first thing he asked me to do was to, because he was starting to work on the uh, conform from uh, FCP7 back in that day. Mm -hmm. uh, so he asked me to list in an Excel spreadsheet <laughs> every, <laughs> every controls of FCP7 to see how we could translate them into, uh, into smoke and flame at that time. So it's, again, I, <laughs> it seems like he's always hiring me to, to do the just boring stuff. <laughs> So uh, it took me again like a good month or two uh, to uh, <laughs> to do all of this, but then yeah, and uh, and uh, just a little while after that, I think this is where Martin left and Philippe Soero um, arrived, and we kind of uh, went from there as a mm -hmm. as a more of a unified flame and smoke team with uh, Stefan and others. So right right now you're a you're a product owner, yeah. Right, that's the that's the the title that you and, and that's, that's the have. title. Yeah, a product yeah. owner doesn't mean that I own uh, <laughs> any share of a, a claim or a, it's more of a agile development uh, methodology. So mm -hmm. it's a, not so if someone if someone has a complaint they can call up Autodesk and ask to speak to the owner they'll, they'll yeah, no, you on the phone. Right. Okay. No, that, uh, <laughs> that's not me. Uh, so. So uh, what is it really is, um, you know, Will Harris, Steve McNeil are product managers for Flame. So they are in charge of the vision of the software. So the product owner is the link between the product management and the development team. So we work closely with Will. So as I said, he says like, he, we want he wants Flame to go in, di in this direction and our role is to make it happen, basically. So we need to decide uh, what is needed to, to fulfill the vision. Are we gonna prioritize the work with the development team? So this is basically the, uh, the, the clear, uh, the clear uh, summary of what is a product owner. <laughs> How like the table of organization works. Yeah. Okay. And as part of that, what we're doing maybe a little bit different than other teams 
is that in our case, the the product owners mainly like like myself, Stefan, are also designing the the features. So in some organization, you can have people who will do just like product owner backlog prioritization things like that, and designers who are. But in our case, we're doing both. Gotcha. Maybe uh, you know, talk to me a little bit about designing a feature. What goes into it, and how? What's the process? Actually, what I can tell you is that designing a feature for Flame is very much different than designing a feature for other products, right? The and I'm not saying because it's Flame, but it's more like designing a feature for 30 years old application. It's pretty <laughs> much different than designing just something for a web page or something like that. Obviously, and we had experience in the past where we had like really designers who had like a, a degree in design right uh, work with us and you could see i wouldn't say it was not a clash of personality but it was a clash of like uh, what we learned in school is that we should should do it that way and like mm -hmm. more like stefan myself it is more like no but in flame it doesn't work that way it's right. like we need to keep that flame spirit right so um so it's it's a little different in that way but designing a feature it really depends on on what on what you are like the the size of the feature you're working on let's say i think about something uh that we did recently let's say uh the the bookmarks when we redid the bookmarks for the media hub and the, the file browser it's really a matter of like gathering all the requests that were made for it and then start with like, what do we have right now? What are the requests? How can we fit all of this? Uh, as part of it, we decided to make the file browser the, in the module the same as the media hub uh, workflow wise and look wise. So you got a, a current experience and we could use the, um, the bookmarks at the at both places and it's really then and it's not the, the thing also that is special let's say in my case is that uh, we're gonna i'm gonna do the initial design i'm gonna present it to the team but like members of my team have been working on flame for 20 years as well so they have like even if they are uh, developers or QA people like they they have a good feel of like what the users will like what they want so so they're not shy of making uh, of making um, uh, suggestions and we work really as a team the one one of the thing also is that I think in in other organization where I said you have more of a, let's say a product owner that takes care of only the backlog prioritization, things like that. And you have like the product manager who is really only into like the, the vision and the, the market studies. And in our case, we have as a product manager, Will, who is, who used to be a user, right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, so we have, he, he have his sales also, we say, oh, you know what, that would be cool. Uh, oh, are you sure about that? So, uh, so we're taking an approach where I think the entire team is uh, actually collaborating on, on making it. But we, we, the product owner, are mainly responsible of, let's say, having that first, uh, that first go at the, the specification. Mm -hmm. How much of, a, of the, the, like the, um, the features that you develop how much of that decision to develop that feature is driven by user feedback versus uh, market, you know, what, what, what the market is demanding versus forward looking trends? Yeah, the, that's a good question. The, uh, I would say when, when you develop a feature, we, we like to say that we need uh, big rocks, medium rocks and small rocks. Okay, because you cannot do like all the big features at once. That's impossible. So you need to pick like one big rock you're going to work on and then like find some smaller features and then very like fill, let's say the, 
the, the, the time we have for a particular release with smaller uh, enhancement. So the big rock usually comes from uh, product management. So it's usually something that is more a vision. A good example in the, in the recent years is Dolby Vision support, right? That was quite a large feature. We had a dedicated team for it. So Will said, you know what, uh, for, to, to make sure that we stay relevant for episodic work like Netflix, uh, like uh, OTT stuff, that they are they gonna have this requirement. We need to actually support Dolby Vision. So that was like product management call. And if you go at the other end of the spectrum with the smaller rocks, then, then this is where Will is giving us a lot of uh, latitude or I'm not sure if in English you can say that, but the, uh, like, okay. lot, yeah. <laughs> so, so he, he let us uh, basically decide mostly what are the, the small rocks and the, uh, and that for us is where uh, flame feedback comes into, uh, into the equation mainly because what we're going to do very often is just look for the, very the small hanging fruit or just the, the, I was talking about the bookmarks, but at some point, um, but what we like to do is try to find something that has a lot of requests and say, you know what, we're gonna, that, that bunch of seven, 10 requests, we're gonna all do them into a single release and that does the, uh, and that's your bookmark improvements, for example. So yeah, the, the feedback requests, I'm sorry, the user request for sure is always taken into consideration. It is not the only thing that is considered because obviously uh, sometimes we have our own agenda, own idea of what we want to do, but uh, it's certainly uh, one of the, it's probably the biggest part of, uh, of what is uh, considered for, to do something or not. I think, I mean, my, my favorite uh, follow up to every release is, you know, your, your e email or your posting that comes out yeah, with like, yeah. here are the 82 things, you know, that we've implemented based on user feedback, uh, especially when some of them are mine. So, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, yeah. Uh, yeah, we're trying to do as much as possible. Obviously, they, there's much more and I, sometimes it, I feel bad because uh, just just this week, let's say on uh, on your forum, on your new uh, awesome uh, forum.logic.tv. Uh, <laughs> I need to have a bell that I can ding anytime <laughs> somebody mentions it. <laughs> somebody said, uh, somebody said, oh, you know what? Uh, Black Magic Raw uh, has been asked uh, on Fame Feedback uh, for uh, two years or three years or something like that. And obviously we cannot do all of them, right? It's, it's just not possible. There's much more entries than, uh, than what we, we can do, but we're mm -hmm. trying to, be, to do as much as possible, that's for sure. I remember sitting in, a, I mean, well, Flame is so many things to so many people. I mean, everybody uses it for different things. You know, I remember sitting in one of the, one of the tech talks uh, in, the, in the suite at NAB, this is years ago, and uh, sitting next to a good friend of mine, and we'll put up, you know, the, the here's a list of 10 things we can work on, you know, we pick two, you know, and the, yeah. on the, on the list that year were something that would be called connected conform. Okay. And something that would be called like substance PBR shading. And I was sitting next to a dear friend of mine who said, you know, when it was his turn, don't waste any time on conform tools, focus all your energies on but physically based rendering. And I said, I have never heard of physically based <laughs> rendering, but I conform things every day. So please oh, yeah. devote some of resources to that. And that's, if that, at least for me, that kind of encapsulated the, the challenge of developing something for so many different you know, users with so many different use cases. It, it is a challenge. It, I mean, sometimes we make, we need to make changes, right? And we know that it's not everybody will like it. And sometimes like people will react saying like, nobody asked for that. Yeah, no, like <laughs> we, we actually had people ask for it. Yeah, somebody did, yeah. <laughs> so, um, 
Yeah, yeah. So, I, got a, I have a question for you here uh, from, from, uh, from Quinn. His question is, what's a feature request that goes deepest into the code or becomes one of the hardest to implement due to historical code issues? Uh, it's, it's really hard to say. The, you, need to, you need to keep in mind that Flame is like 30 years old, like a 30 years old piece of code. So it depends, I would say, on the, I mean, not on the frequency of where we need to go make a change on it, but let's say action is something that has been evolving at almost every release, right? So like there's a good knowledge of that code and there's, it's not much of an issue to actually have somebody who knows what it is doing. But there are some other parts where like the code has literally not has changed for the past 20 years and <laughs> people are like, oh yeah, I'm not sure like what's going on there. So those are more of a challenge. But as I said, one of the strength of the, the thing that we have is that we actually have quite a lot of people who have been working on Flame for 15, 20 years. So we still have quite a good knowledge of what's, what's going on. So that's, a, that's, a, that's good. But yeah, there I are... Think, go ahead, no, sorry. I, I was about to say, there are some cases where we want to do go make a change somewhere and we're all, yeah, I'm not sure what's happening there. I'm not sure what this piece of code is supposed to do. That's about... Right. For some things like quite large, like Flame, and as old as Flame, that's totally understandable. Well, this certainly explains, finally, thank you for explaining why there hasn't been any update to the flip node in Bash <laughs> of all these years. Obviously, yeah. that's code that runs very deep to the core. Yeah. That's of, only uh, because we no longer have any people with the knowledge <laughs> of doing flip. That's, uh, we're still looking. See, we're, we're breaking, uh, this is breaking news here on Logic Live. We're really, we're ans asking the difficult questions. Oh, man. What about, um, let me ask you, uh, to talk, we've talked about feedback before and like the, how important user feedback is. Um, what about uh, the most, what I think is the most controversial subject usually that comes up with changes to Flame, and that's hotkeys. You, you're also the, of the, the you're, you're a guardian of many things in Flame, a keeper of many keys, but hotkeys always also come into your, your purview. And, and it, it seems that when something has to change, the feedback is, is particularly harsh when it comes to changing anybody's muscle memory. Yeah, but it, it is. And for sure, it's, we totally understand the muscle memory part. That's, and that that's legitimate, right? That I mean, it's true that we are messing with the, with the muscle memory. But in a way, so first thing, okay, one of the myths that is out there is like us changing keyboard shortcuts for no reason. I don't think that ever happened. Like it, we never encountered like a day where we were like, yeah, I don't think we have anything to do today. So let's just change shortcuts as a nation just, <laughs> just for fun. Uh, yeah. So it never happened. But shortcuts are, it's not easy, right? Because first of all, we have four user profiles and the, the best solution is always to have the same shortcuts in all the profiles. So we need to go dig and find like the, the common open shortcuts, but there's not that much left. And the, yeah. <laughs> so sometimes it's, it's almost like, like stupid how we can be like three to four people trying to figure out what keystroke is left and think, you know what, it could be a control tab. No, because that's it. And we got to have like discussions on, trying to find a shortcut designation. So yeah, so what happens is that when we think that what we are introducing is gonna be more useful, more important than something that's been there for like quite a while, then we'll say, you know what, we're gonna make the change. 
that gonna probably make some people angry, but they still <laughs> have the possibility to change it back if they want. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, in, in some case, we would like some of the premium keystroke to be used to be used for new stuff but we know that we cannot like mess with that that's that's just not possible but the extra sh sh shortcuts are not easy no and listen i have all of my um frequently used python scripts uh synced to the control meta alt something hotkeys so i would like to publicly request that control meta alt <laughs> as a combination is is preserved but oh yeah <laughs> but but you know what what is i find amazing and you have one right one of the those device where you can assign like uh, basically shortcuts to uh to uh yeah so so you're gonna showcase it yeah so the, like i personally i think this is amazing we cannot really like ship something uh ship something out of the box for for playing but i was helping a customer with a python script uh, last week and uh, and when we got it working he just sent me a picture of like the a button on the on his screen <laughs> already assigned to the screen and i was like that's amazing that's every everybody should have one that's awesome that's great what um what hotkeys do you use are you a smoke hotkeys or flame hotkeys I used to be, let's say, uh, smoke, smoke classic all the way probably for my first uh, 15, 16 years. But the, the, real, the reality is that we, we have more people actually using the, the, flame, the flame user profiles. But I'm still, let's say, the... Uh, so I, I don't want people to think that we're going to get rid of the uh, small classic shortcut profile. I'm still the, the guardian of it. And, <laughs> and uh, we're still considering it and adding to it and making sure it still works. But yeah, I migrated from uh, smoke to flame just because it was making more sense for us to uh, actually work with the, the, the user profile that is most used by, mm -hmm. by a good margin. Uh, let's transition to the effects tab. You, you um, you're as a, as a, as a product owner, right? You, you kind of cover uh, batch. Um, of course, the aforementioned hotkeys, the timeline, uh, my favorite, the Python API, but also the effects tab. Yeah. Um, tell me, let's talk a little bit about that coming to, to fruition. How did it start and, and how has it evolved? It, it started where we, but where we decided that improving the, the finishing workflow of the timeline was one of the objectives that we had. So if you remember back in the days in Smoke, we had the soft effects at the timeline level where you had like individual editors for all of those. Then we went through the highly successful 20th anniversary where we uh, release i remember yeah 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 it's uh, this is where the the gray and the <laughs> white started to appear in my beard the uh, you're so, about to turn 30 right is that what you're saying <laughs> <laughs> and the and um, when we put the timeline in flame and we started to create that that workflow we we then decided that improving that part of flame was quite important for the finishing work so we had some different choices one of the frequently requested thing also that we had back uh, back then was to improve the color workflow in flame and this is not really something that we thought that batch was well suited for so we decided to take all of those requests create a new tab that would make uh, make actually both possible so we didn't go with a solution where we would have a tab dedicated to color and then a tab dedicated to finishing but to do all of it uh, in the same environment so we started implementing it and since then we have been working on it for um, quite a few releases now we started in 2019 if we're not if i'm not mistaken in the 2019 release mm -hmm. and since then basically at every different uh, 
releases, we have made some improvements to it. And what was the goal? Uh, was it was it was it or I shouldn't say goal? The intended audience was this for for users who were maybe new to the application, or 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 users who were trying to do something existing users who were trying to do something new with the application? No, I don't think it was. I don't think it was targeted to people who were really new or current, or it was really targeted to people who wanted to do like finishing in a environment where you have like your timeline and you can quickly go from one shot to the other, compare with the previous shot, the next shot. So certainly this is not something that was aimed at every frame users, right? The, it's still totally okay for people to still work uh, one shot at a time in batch. And we, we have made some improvements to that workflow as well, right? right? With the conform and the, the shot creation and the, the smart replays. So it's not a workflow that we have abandoned and say it's, it's no longer what the flame should be, uh, should be used uh, for. But it's just that we wanted to provide that other option. We had a lot of people working already doing that directly from the timeline using BFX, which is still possible and, and works pretty well. But you didn't have that easy navigation from one shot to the other. You didn't have like the context of your timeline. So uh, we thought that what we did for the FX tab was filling that, that void a little bit. So it's always good to have uh, different options. So it, it's just one more option. Uh, what's interesting is that in some cases, uh, people are using it almost as a, uh, a reviewing tool in a way because you can go in there and just like go quickly from one shot to the other. Some people like to do their color work in there. So, uh, so it's a, one more tool to the, to, the Swiss, to the Swiss knife. Yeah, Brooks says here the effects tab has made it so he doesn't have to run. Uh, he doesn't have to run into a different color program. So he's using it for color. That, that, that makes us happy. <laughs> this, is, uh, right. this is our goal for sure. And uh, if anybody does have any questions for Fred, please uh, put them in the Q&A panel so that way everybody can keep track. Fred, do you have a, a, a favorite part of Flame or a favorite part of the software? Uh, it, it's, hard to, it's hard to say. The, I, I started, like I said, in smoke. So the, the timeline still has a, a special uh, place in my art. The uh, it, this is where uh, I started, but the but the uh, I would say in, in the in the past, I think it probably depends on what you're focusing on. So I would say that like over the entire twenty years I've been there, it's probably the timeline that is like the dearest to my heart. But I started to like grow on on a batch. And recently, we were spending much time on the FX tab, so it has a, it has a little a, a special space as well. What kind of things can we do? Uh, Randy had a question here. What kind of things can we do to be better supporters for, uh, for you in the, in the, on the, the dev side? It's, it's, a, it's a tough question because you are already like great supporters. That's if there's one thing, and I think everybody know about it, right? Is that we have a, an incredible community of users. The the best thing that you can do is just make sure that you continue giving feedback. Uh, that's for sure. Uh, not only positive feedback. Positive feedback is always nice. I mean, anybody who does something and put it out there likes to have people saying, oh, what you did is great, just like uh, Brooke just told, right? I, I'm using it all the time. I don't have to use that music to our ears that this is what we're doing the, the, the software for. But the negative feedback is as important if not more important, right? Because this is how we can make that thing better. This is how we, we can improve it so more people are happy about it. So, so yeah, be constructive in your uh, criticism, I think is a, a very well said by Quinn here. This is, 
I know this is sometimes hard. Uh, you may be uh, finishing a 16 hours a day of work and didn't work well and you're not uh, really happy about it and you need a place to vent, that's, that's understandable. But yeah, constructive criticism is probably the, the best thing that you can do. Very good. I got two more questions for you here. Uh, Valentine's wondering, uh, he says, I, uh, Flame on Mac can use ICC monitor profiles, but Flame on Linux cannot. Do you know why? Uh, you know what? I don't know. I, I really don't know. That, that would be, a, this is something I can uh, take a note on and uh, ask uh, our uh, color scientist, uh, Doug Walker, about that. Mm -hmm. I, I couldn't answer that. Uh, I, I'll email it to you after we're done. And then um, Brooks was wondering um, what's going on with, uh, with, with, with Flame Assist? He says, uh, actually, the question was, I wonder what's going on with Smoke and I guess Flame Assist. Yeah, the, I, I think it's pretty well known out there, but Flame Assist now is basically what you had with Smoke back in the days, right? It was really, uh, Smoke was this companion to, to Flame that it was more timeline centric. And then we decided at some point to make a push with like the, the smoke, uh, smoke on Mac. And the, it didn't quite get the, the buzz that we, we thought. And we, but there's still a, a, a use for it for some people to have more of a lower entry point. But if you look at what's been going on lately, you can clearly see that much of the effort are put on the, what we call the, the flame family. So the flame flare and the flame assist. And flame assist is really the, the equivalent of what you had with uh, smoke on Linux back in the days. Mm -hmm. Thanks for the questions, guys. What, uh, what, what are some of the exciting things that you're looking forward to? Obviously without, without giving anything away, um yeah that, <laughs> that's gonna be a challenge but we, we, we well, have one christmas <laughs> two yeah. yeah obviously football season coming back yeah football in a week at the end of the pandemic uh, <laughs> the um, um we, we have but some... if you had to have a number three what would the number three <laughs> <laughs> the, we have some uh, we've been working on some you know we i mentioned uh, taking many different f requests we have on Flame Feedback and creating a, a common solution to it. We have something that is uh, coming up for that uh, on uh, the update tool release that we're going to release this fall that I think based on the uh, beta feedback that we've uh, got so far, so far will be, uh, should be a nice hit with the users. So uh, this is this is something that uh, uh, my team in the, the development team we, is excited about. Uh, other than that, we are, we are looking at some of the most requested features on Flame Feedback. So this is also something that, that is, it's always nice when you work on something that you know has been requested a lot, right? Because you know that you're gonna probably have people happy with it and it's always more fun than the, <laughs> the feedback uh, and the, and people saying like nobody asked about it why did you do that so we're, we're working on on some of those right now so it's 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 mainly fun to <laughs> to work on that that's great does uh does anybody have any other questions for fred We'll give them a couple minutes. I, uh, I, I just want to thank you for, for uh, always being so generous with your time uh, for, for the community. I mean, I, I know anybody, I mean, I'm speaking selfishly for myself whenever, you know, whenever I've had questions and, and posted them, you've always, you know, been quick to respond, but, but uh, it, it's really just uh, so appreciated that, uh, that you guys are accessible and approachable. And, uh, and I just want to say thank you now that I've got you here. Yeah, I, I, I think it's uh, I think it's probably one of the 
the strength of the, the flame team personally. I think you have a, a whole variety of people who will answer, right? It's not only uh, product management or uh, designers, but we have a bunch of developers who are monitoring like the different forums um, every day and who are uh, looking at the feedback. Uh, maybe you don't always see their name because they are feeding us the answers, right? So we it's uh, it's easier for for us to uh, to make a political uh, politically <laughs> correct uh, answer on, on the forum but um, but there's a, a good amount of uh, great people who are looking at, at all the feedback and trying to to make it the easy uh, easy for you guys oh that's great that's great every time I always have this vision that every time you respond with, uh, I need to check with the developer on that. There's just like, you know, there's this, there's, there's books being opened in the back where everybody's trying to figure out, you know, that's great. That's wonderful. Thanks, Fred. Yeah. And if you, if you take a peek at the chat, there's uh, there's love all around. So, um, <laughs> Brooks put in a question that says, Hey, Fred, do you do any work? Uh, do you still freelance? I have a program that needs every button cataloged. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> um, oh. Yeah, I don't want to say no, Brooks, but uh, <laughs> I don't have some free time <laughs> this time around. Sorry. <laughs> oh, man. Well, we'll make sure that uh, to take your name off the Microsoft 360 gift card that, uh, that you know, we're going to give away at Christmas time, I'm sure. But Fred, thank you very much. And, uh, and do take care. Thank you very much, Andy. You got it. All right, everybody, let me, uh, we're gonna, we're gonna switch to a screen share here and we're gonna, let's see, is it, oh wait, is it, I think it, it might be, it's prize time here at Logic Live. Hold on, let me, uh, let me go into the Logic Live here, which is the um, shelf in my guest room and extract from my box, from the uh, box of plenty here, a, uh, a Logic phone charger. Everybody see that there in the window, right? We're gonna give one of those away. And let's see how we're gonna do that. <laughs> how can I screw this up today <laughs> after last week? Let's see. Oh, yes, right. So uh, last week, we gave away two Logic phone chargers. One went to the uh, lovely and talented uh, Carrie Welton, who uh, lives in Santa Monica and did us the solid of, you know, riding his bike over to the Autodesk office. And then I woke up this morning and got an email from Miriam that she received hers in London. So thank you, guys. And now we're going to uh, award one to somebody else. I think I found yet another... Uh, internet way of solving this problem of picking the winner. This would be the name picker website, which is brought to you by, uh, it looks like the, by Cleveland, the mistake by the lake. So let's see here. I put everybody's name in the list and uh, I'll click start and let's see who this is going to go to. Well, I see a Python project in my future and the winner is, is Paul Hill with us today. No, Paul Hill is not with us today. Okay, then we will pick another name. There's the Jira service desk. Paul Round with us today. Is there anyone named Paul with us today? <laughs> There's got to be a way to do this. Okay, one more time. Here we go. Peter. Peter Tree Size. You, my friend, congratulations, are the lucky winner of the Logic Phone Battery. Look for it in the mail, coming to you in a mailbox near you soon. All right, let's close this out. So everybody, coming up, we gotta figure out how to fade that music out. That would be a, <laughs> that'll be a major improvement, right? Coming up on Logic Live next week, uh, September 13th, we have a Mocha Deep Dive with Mary Poplin from Boris FX. And September 20th, Christoph Saplatel is coming back to show off some of his beauty techniques. And then we're going to be off on the 27th, but I'm going to be announcing uh, some Logic Live episodes for October coming very soon, right? Uh, also, there's, of course, the One Frame of White. If you haven't entered, please enter now. Become a flame legend at oneframeofwhite.com. 
Um, you know, I'm going to put in the chat just so everybody has it. Uh, these are registration links for the next two Logic Lives. Of course, head on over to forum.logic.tv, sign up and contribute and be part of the community there. And of course, this and uh, this episode will be available on logic.tv as soon as I can get it up there. And um, also be sure to check out the Logic podcast. The last episode was an interview I did with um, with Alan and Jesse from Instinctual, and uh, it was <laughs> it was hysterical. So I highly recommend uh, checking that out. And of course, uh, if you do watch any of the Logic Lives on YouTube, please sub hit subscribe. That would be much appreciated. Again, thanks to everybody at Synesis for supporting Logic Live solutions development integration and support. Find out all about their remote workflow solutions at synesis.io. Thank you very much to Fred and thanks everybody for attending. That's gonna do it for Logic Live this week. We will see you next week.